Welcome to what it do, man. It's your boy Dose, man. We back with another video, man. Before we get into it, man, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to turn on post notifications. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Do that, man. If if you alive, if you alive and well, man. I'm not saying if you alive and doing and just got you rich. If you alive, God still got you on this earth around your family around your loved ones man make sure you like and subscribe to the channel man man i'm i'm doing I'm, my stomach growl all types of look at though rebound channel man shout out to rebound we got weirdest mysteries in nba history uh i don't really know what to expect i don't know what to expect man uh but without any further ado we just gonna go and check it out you know what i'm saying hopefully hopefully it's something we don't know mysteries in NBA history and first off we got the time that the OKC Thunder had an unexplainable encounter 30,000 feet in the air see back in 2017 the Thunder were on a flight to Chicago when all of a sudden a loud thud echoed across the cabin and the plane started to shake unnaturally Boy, this was not turbulence because when the team landed just an hour later, they discovered something horrifying. The entire nose of their plane was completely caved in. What? Almost as if something or someone had crashed into them. So with the players desperate for answers, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Someone had crashed into them. So with the Carmelo asked me, what possibly could have we hit hit? What possibly could we have hit in the sky? At this time of night, man, what? The players desperate for answers. Delta Airlines was forced to launch a full-on investigation, and after a few days, the only answer they could provide was the plane likely encountered a bird while on descent. Nigga. Yeah. The problem with that theory is, when a plane hits a bird, it gets completely covered in blood. But if you look closely. There's not a single speck on that entire plane. I'm talking about whatever so it was, are, it knocked the paint off. You never know what truly happened to the Thunder that night. But at least this was just a one-off event. Because NBA players have been getting terrorized for years at the haunted Skirvin Hotel. See, legend has it that in the 1920s, the hotel's owner, William Skirvin, locked a maid in a room on the 10th floor, and being trapped in a tiny hotel room started to drive her insane. Eventually, she decided to throw herself out the window, plummeting over 140 feet to her death. And ever since that day, her ghost has been wandering the hotel, causing all kinds of paranormal activity. Like in 2010, Bruh. when the Knicks reported hearing strange noises throughout the hotel, keeping them up all night long. Or when the Bulls stayed at the Skirvin a couple weeks later, only for Taj Gibson to see his bathroom door slammed shut on its own. But as creepy as these incidents been were, the scariest encounter came in 2016, when after a night of horror, Meta World Peace shared his traumatic ghost experience with the entire world, saying, the ghost was all over me. I just accepted it. She touched me all over the place. I'm taking the ghost to court for touching me in the wrong places. Damn, now I want to visit the Skirvin. Now, as creepy as the Skirvin Hotel is. I oh, hey, if it's really so wrong with this place, why is it still open? Build a new building, nigga. If y'all get all this money, nigga, look at, I ain't gonna lie, if I'm an NBA player, and we come to whatever city this is, I'm not staying there. Nigga, no. I rent an Airbnb for the night. Nigga, I ain't over with. Liz, at least everyone made it home to their family. Because the disappearance of retired NBA player Lorenzen Wright has mystified investigators for years. July 18th, 2010, 7.30 p.m. Lorenzen Wright was visiting his ex-wife, Shira, in Memphis, Tennessee, to help put his kids to bed. And with night swiftly approaching, he decided to step out the front door and head home. July 19th, 1218 AM, just four hours later, a haunting 911 call comes in from an unknown number at an unknown location. Georgetown 911, where's your emergency? 
Nigga, them gunshots. Second, seventy-two hours after the phone call, Lorenzen Wright is officially reported missing after no one had seen or heard from him in three days, sparking a statewide police investigation into his disappearance. And it wouldn't be until six days later that the world would finally get some answers. Because on July 28th, Lorenzen's body was found riddled with bullet holes, rotting in a. Nigga, why you never heard this stuff, nigga? And I'm from Lake Village, Arkansas, man. Stand up, hogs. You know what I'm saying? Look here. That's crazy. I ain't never heard of this. Never. In a nearby forest. Escalating this from a disappearance case up to an FBI murder investigation. Police probed the crime scene, searched Lorenzen's house, and interrogated his family and friends, desperately searching for clues. But after seven years, nothing concrete was ever found. So it seemed like whoever murdered Lorenzen would remain a mystery forever. Man, Until November of 2017, when the case was cracked wide open, thanks to an eerie discovery by the FBI. See, uh, the feds found a gun at the bottom of a lake in nearby Mississippi. And this gun not only matched the bullets found in Lorenzen, but it also tracked back to a guy named Billy Ray Turner, who just so happened to be best friends with Lorenzen's ex-wife, Shira. So with police in possession of the murder weapon and two prime suspects, Shira and Billy were arrested just a month later. And in July of 2019, a year and a half after fighting the charges, Lorenzen's ex-wife Shira finally confessed to orchestrating the murder. Why is it always but a woman? as horrifying as Lorenzen's story is, this is not the only mystery involving a dead NBA player. Because one of the most iconic NBA video games is being haunted by the ghost of an NBA star. See, back when NBA Jam was first released in 1993, one of the playable characters was Net star Drazen Petrovic. But sadly, okay. a few months after the game was released, Drazen tragically died in a car accident. And ever since that fateful day, something ominous has been happening to NBA Jam. I mean, just listen to what their founder, Mark Termel, had to say. Somehow, the coin-operated game in the attract mode, when nobody's playing, would every once in a while would just call out Petrovic, you know, Petrovic, just out of the blue. And so, you know, people caught on to that, that there was some, it felt like a haunted, you know, haunted yeah, game. Yeah, I would unplug them and, all uh, the so, way. Yeah, I don't know how that glitch could happen or what, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Petrovic, Petrovic. That's crazy. <laughs> But look, it, oh, got, it, gotta, no. it gotta get There's out There's some house. weird stuff going on with this game. Gotta get out. But what's even more weird is the NBA player that vanished in the thin air and was never seen again. See, back Ooh. in 1999, Piston center Bison Dele retired from the NBA to pursue his lifelong dream of traveling the world. So he purchased a boat, named it Hakuna Matata, and spent the next three years sailing the Pacific Ocean. But on July 6, 2002, Something went horribly wrong, cause with his brother Miles and girlfriend Serena, Bison set sail from the port of Tahiti and was never seen again. When That's no one had crazy. heard from Bison in over a week, I don't an play investigation with that water, was launched by the Tahitian police. Mm -mm. And a few days later, they learned that the Hakuna Matata was seen docking at Tahiti just days after Bison had last set sail. Problem was, the only person that on got it. off the ship was Bison's brother, Miles. And when police tried tracking him down, he was nowhere to be found. So with no leads to go off of, police decided to interrogate Miles' close friends to try and find some answers. And according to Miles' ex-girlfriend, Miles admitted to attacking Bison on the boat, which is exactly what investigators needed to hear to get a warrant for Miles' arrest. So the feds started their search, trying to hunt him down. And on September 15, 2002, they received an anonymous tip saying that Miles was spotted on a beach in Tijuana, Mexico. So hey. police swarmed the scene, expecting to make an arrest, only to find Miles in a drug-induced coma, barely clinging on to life. And shortly after, he was pronounced dead. Just like that, That's the investigation wild, was over. And whatever actually God, happened to Bison dope. remains an unsolved mystery to this day. 
Now, as strange as this story was, he threw that nigga off in the water, bro. He probably threw that nigga off. He probably threw that nigga off in in the ocean. Kept going in the boat. That's all he had to do. The nigga was never gonna make it out. He ain't have to kill that nigga. If he had a just caught the nigga on the edge, threw him off, get on the boat, dude, dude dead. Some gonna get him. Something gonna get him. The mysteries are only gonna water, get man. weirder from here. Because there's something so dark about Michael Jordan that it just might have forced him to retire from the NBA. See, in 1993, right after Jordan had won his third ring, he mysteriously left the NBA with no explanation, causing fans around the world to wonder why. Well, it turns out that Jordan was hiding something scandalous. See, back in 1991, the FBI was investigating a criminal named Slim Buller when they came across a $57,000 check made out to Slim, signed by Michael Jordan. And after some interrogation, it was revealed that the check was to pay off some gambling debt that Michael owed. I remember yeah, that. Jordan was getting mixed up with some real sketchy people. And not long after, his name popped up in another shady scenario. Because police in North Carolina were investigating the murder of Eddie Dow, a notorious gambler. When they located $108,000 in checks, signed by Michael Jordan. Wait. And once again... Jordan admitted writing these checks because of a gambling debt. So after the second incident, the NBA opened an investigation into Jordan's gambling history to make sure nothing illegal was going on. And ultimately, they found no wrongdoing. Jordan wasn't punished, and he promised to not get involved with shady gamblers again. Until 1993, when another gambler came forward and claimed that Jordan owed him $1.2 million. So in response, the NBA launched another investigation into Jordan. But this time, there was no conclusion to the investigation. Because shortly after, Jordan announced his retirement and the investigation mysteriously went away. Leaving mm. fans wondering if it was all just a part of a secret deal he made with the commissioner to avoid an NBA suspension for gambling. Now, we might never know if this was true or not, but Jordan That's was wild, allowed back man. in the league just a year later, so it didn't turn out too bad for him in the end. But I can't say the same for the Sacramento Kings, because the mystery of what happened in the 2002 playoffs cost the Kings an NBA championship. Man, that nigga hurt, didn't See, he? back in 2002, <laughs> the Kings were squaring off against the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, when in the fourth quarter of Game 6, with Sacramento just one win away from taking the series, something weird started happening. The referees started calling all kinds of questionable fouls on the Kings, mm. and to make things even weirder, they also kept missing obvious fouls on the Lakers, almost as if they wanted the Lakers to win. And because of all these foul calls, Lakers ended up shooting an NBA playoff record, 27 free throws in the fourth quarter alone. So LA went on to win game six, and after the dub, people became really suspicious of the refs. King's coaches, I remember, NBA I remember reporters. This, though. I mean, a politician even wrote a letter to the commissioner demanding an investigation into this. But despite the outrage, the series went back to LA, the Lakers eliminated the Kings, and the whole incident was put to rest. Until 2008. See, former referee Tim Donaghy was facing a prison sentence for illegally betting on games he officiated. And right before his sentencing, he wrote a letter saying that game six between the Lakers and Kings was rigged by the refs, arguing that it was in the NBA's best interest to help the Lakers make it to another finals. And when this letter went public, the NBA's commissioner tried to silence Donahue, saying his accusations were baseless and were a cheap attempt at getting his prison sentence lowered. So to this day, it's still mm. unclear which side was telling the hey, truth. Hey man, in the look, day it's a business, there's man. There's one final story you can't trust that's him. even weirder. Because what if I told you that the legendary Yao Ming might have been literally created by the Chinese government? What? Yeah. See, in the 1950s, China saw the rising popularity of the NBA. And legend has it that they decided to try and create the next basketball superstar. So their first move was to make a national decree, demanding that every woman above 5'9 and every man above 6'6 six six mm. must play basketball for the country. And this one law led to the discovery of 6'3 female Feng Fengdi and 6'7 male Yao Ziwen. 
the two players that Chinese officials thought had the perfect genetics to create the next basketball phenom. So allegedly, China's government forced these two to marry and That's have a crazy. kid, giving birth to Yao Ming. That's crazy. After growing twice as fast as the average kid, 13-year-old Yao was already six foot six, but it still wasn't tall enough for the Chinese government. And according to Yao's childhood doctors, they started feeding him experimental growth hormones, all in an attempt to make Yao grow even taller. And they worked, because by the time Yao became an adult, he was standing at a ridiculous seven foot six, guaranteeing him a spot in the NBA and helping the Chinese government achieve and their ultimate the boy goal was a baller of creating too. a basketball monster. Let's not but you know that. what my the ultimate goal tough. is? For you to click on this video right here. These are times NBA well, players on. lost millions what, 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 of fans. What, 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 Trust me, dog. Oh, you don't want to miss this. So what are you doing? Click it. Hey, we might check that out. Let me, hey, let me go. I'll subscribe. Let me go. Hey, look at my see they didn't turn the dislike off. Okay, that's what's going on. Hey, man, I ain't gonna lie. That that this video then did something to me, man. I never, I just subscribed to Rebound when I went to when I started the video. Cause I said, hey, they talking about basketball. I need to be here. Look here, man. Rebound, boy. Keep doing what you're doing, nigga. I am speechless. Weirdest mysteries in the NBA history, man. I'm gonna leave the original link down below, man. So y'all can go support over there. But make sure you support over here too. Like the video. Subscribe to the video. Click the bell on the video. You know what I'm saying? For your boy Do. You know what I'm saying? But look at it, man. Let's gonna wrap it over this one, boy. Dose until next time. I'm out of y'all, boy. Mm.